Okay, let's get started. Welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Anita Prolox and I'm the head of outreach here at protocols.io. And I'm very excited to have you all join us today for this webinar that is on utilizing protocols.io for protocol development. Just before we get started, a couple of notes. Um, we are recording this webinar, so everybody who registered for this webinar will receive a recording of this afterwards. And um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them into the Q&A window. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to put them into the Q&A section of um, this Zoom interface. You should see a little button that says Q&A on the bottom of your screen. And if you click on that, you can submit questions um, and we'll have time to get to questions at the end. Yeah, so let's just jump right in. Our agenda for today is I will be talking a little bit about protocols that I use in general, give you a quick introduction. Then I will talk about um, our workspaces, so how you can use workspaces to develop protocols together with your team. Um, that will also include, include different team administration settings and also the file manager. Next, we'll take a look at the editor, so how you can create protocols um, with the editor. And then also two things that I want to highlight here that are really great for protocol development are our commenting functionality and versioning. And then in the end, I'll just quickly go into like running protocols. So when you're, when you created protocols and you're in the lab and you're actually like conducting an experiment, you can use our run functionality to actually run protocols and receive protocol or experiment records afterwards. And then I'll touch on some security um, as well. And then in the end, as I mentioned before, we will have time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, again, please put them into the Q&A section here on Zoom. The key insights of this webinar are that you'll learn how you can manage research data and protocols through protocols.io how you can simplify your teamwork and improve collaboration while you're developing protocols, and also overall how really the platform can help you to save time and keep your work organized. Just very quick, quick introduction for anybody who might be new to protocols.io. Um, protocols.io is really a central place for protocols. So it's really like one place where you can store all your protocols, you can share protocols with others, you can develop protocols, you can even publish protocols. Um, but they're really, if you would look at the protocols that IO platform, it really can be split into like two parts. One is we have an open access protocol repository. So if you are publishing protocols, you can publish them in our open access repository. Um, that's always free. And then also, if you want to keep things private, so you don't have to publish things, obviously, you can also keep protocols private and just collaborate internally and just develop protocols internally and store them for your, ter for your team. Um, you can also have private workspaces and they do come with enterprise level security. You can have shared notebook records, you can have unlimited private files and additional features. So when we look at protocol development, um, if you're developing protocols or if you have developed protocols, you know that a couple of things are really important. Is, and one of them is you, you usually, or a lot of times you, you iterate a lot and you have like a lot of different versions that you might try and you change a lot of things. So there might be a lot of things that still like while you're developing the method, like they change over time. So you might test out a couple different variables and you want to like record the, the results on different things while you're like optimizing your method. And protocols.io has some great features to just allow, that just allow you to keep track of your protocol development. One feature that I really want to highlight here is our version control, and I'll get into that a little bit later as well. But really, if you're creating a protocol and you like create new versions, you really want to keep track of that so you know exactly which version was developed when and like how the protocol evolved. 
Another thing that's really great is forking and forking is great, for example, if you're working with multiple people on a protocol and maybe one person is trying out one thing and the other person is trying out something different, you can create like kind of like really a branching um, system of your protocol. So you can go into different directions depending on what kind of things you're doing. So really the protocols that IO platform allows you to really track all the the changes that you make to the protocol over time and just really allow you to optimize it while you're testing out different things. And also the running functionality. So when you're when you created a protocol on the protocols that I have platform and then you go in the lab and you're ready to run a protocol or like test out a protocol, you can use our running functionality to basically just step through um, the protocol and add any notes and comments to really just like capture everything that you want to capture for that particular experiment. And that really allows you to keep track of everything and just um, give you a record of what happened on a particular day. Um, the protocol that I platform can really be structured. If you look at it, it's really structured in three different um, main features or main um, parts. One of it is our file manager. This is where all your files are stored and all your protocols are stored and where just really everything happens. Next is um, our next our workspaces. So um, if you're collaborating with others, you will do that through um, workspaces. And then last, our editor. So when you're creating protocols, you'll do that through the editor and I'll, and on this webinar today, I just want to quickly touch on all three of these elements. And I would like to start with the workspaces. So when you are setting up a new workspace, you can invite others to your group. So if you have like a, a team and you want to work on a project together with that team, you can create a workspace. And the workspaces come with group management. So you really have like a granular so permission system, you really have full control over who has access to what and what people can do within that workspace. And it's really great because with the workspaces on protocols.io, you really um, have everything in one place. So you might experience in your team that sometimes some people have things on a Google document and then there might be like a Dropbox folder where like other things are stored. Somebody uses an electronic lab notebook, maybe some people have a paper notebook. So a lot of times we see that in teams, like within teams, things are just all over the place and like there's, there's not like one central place. And with the, the workspaces and protocols that I, oh, we really give you that one space where you can just have everything in one place. So really you can have everything collect it here and you can structure it in a way that it works for your team and it just allows for secure file sharing. And they also do come with a lot of different other functionalities that can be really helpful for you to just structure your team and just make it as efficient as possible. One thing that I want to highlight here is that we have a fully integrated task manager. So if you are planning out experiments, especially now after coronavirus, if you need to like set up in a calendar exactly when somebody's in the lab and doing what, you can um, structure all these tasks with like a, a calendar for the entire team and also it does come with a reagent manager so if you want to just track all your reagents that are available in the lab you can um, do that and the reagent manager also is useful if you do put your reagents into that when you're building protocols you'll have all you'll have access to all the reagents that are available in your for your team um, when you're setting up a workspace you will <clears throat> Excuse me, you will be asked if you want to make it a visible workspace or an invisible workspace. And the difference really is just that if you make it a visible workspace, um, when somebody comes to protocols.io and they search for your workspace name, they'll be able to see like a public facing profile of it. And if you do an invisible workspace, nobody will be able to see your workspace and only really the people who you actively invite to be a part of the workspace will be able to see it. So just keep those things in mind when you're setting up a workspace. And as I mentioned, they do come with team administration. So one thing or some things that you can, for example, say is, especially if you're developing protocols, you might not want to publish them yet. So for example, you could disable the ability to get a DOI or to publish 
And also one thing that you really want to make sure is, um, probably is that when you have team members working on things, you really want to make sure that all their work stays within the team. So if you have a workspace and somebody's doing work and you have all the, the work in, in the workspace, um, if one time or if one day the, the team member leaves, all the files don't leave with them. So it really stays within the team. So here, for example, you can say, prevent from removing files. So really only the admins of that particular workspace are able to remove things. And then the file manager, as I mentioned before, the file manager is really where everything happens. Here's where all your protocols will be stored and all your experiment records and everything. You can also add any other file type to here to it. So if you have any spreadsheets or presentations or images, anything that you might need to share with the entire team or with your work with your yeah with your team in the workspace, you can add it to there. And the file manager really allows you to um, structure it in a way that you want it to be structured and we'll take a closer look at it in a second. But it really allows you to do anything that you might need to be able to do with a protocol from there. So you can like share it with others, you can like run it, you can edit it, you can do really anything that you might need to do with files. So you can do it through the file manager. And it really allows you to archive things, audit and export as well. You can also connect your workspace, your file manager um, to Dropbox or Google Drive box and OneDrive. So if you want to ever back up everything, which is a good thing always to do, you can very easily with a couple of clicks just back up all your data into a different um, storage provider. This is a quick look inside the file manager. And as I mentioned here, you have all your protocols, but you can also add any other files here and you can use the folder kind of structure to just like organize things with um, however you want to organize it for different projects or teams or people. Um, it's really up to you how you want to organize this space. And if you click on something, a right hand side panel will open up that allows you just like to do all the, to perform all the commands that you might need to do to a protocol. So you can transfer to ownership or export, run, share, create a new version, all these things. Okay, and the third element that we want to cover in today's webinar is our editor. So when you are creating protocols, you will do that through our editor. And um, the great thing about the protocols on protocols.io is that they are not static PDFs, but they're interactive and dynamic protocols. So when you're creating protocols, you have the option to create them in like an easy to follow step-by-step -step format. And we'll take a look at what this looks like in a second, but you can really create like individual steps to just really make the method as clear as possible for others and really like just structure in a way that it's really easy to understand and follow. Because oftentimes when we're describing methods, um, especially if it's in a, a paper, you might find it that it's really actually hard to understand because it's written in a very complicated way and there's no clear step-by-step -step instructions for, for the method. So with protocols.io, we really allow you to create these easy to follow step-by-steps. And you can also create um, color coded section labels. So you can just group sections into different, um, you can just group steps into different sections and you can add detailed components. And also another great thing is if you're developing a protocol with somebody else, you can use our concurrent editing feature. So you can really invite others to edit the protocol directly with you. And there is a granular editing history, so you'll be able to see exactly who made which changes to the protocol and when. And this is a quick look inside the editor. So as I mentioned, you have the individual steps and then you have the, the sections, you can add even like little icons and then you have our components. You can see all the components here on the right side. But the components are really great to use, especially if you're planning to use the run functionality, because if you, for example, use the amount component, you'll be able to scale the protocol or scale individual steps. So if here I would scale this by three, it would tell me I need one and a half milliliters of buffer A instead of half a milliliter. And if you use the timer, if you use the duration component, um, you will have a timer that pops up. 
So it's really convenient and really good to use these components when you're building your protocol. Um, also, if you're developing protocols and you really want to let people know that they're still develop, being developed and they're confidential and they should not be shared with anybody, you have an option to activate a little um, confidential warning. So if you're sharing it with anybody, they will see this little pop-up that just um, that just lets them know that this is confidential and they shouldn't be sharing it. And once you've created your protocol, as I mentioned, you can share it with others. And then the commenting functionality is a really great way to just like keep working on the method. So if you share with others, they will be able to add comments on the protocol. And, and this really allows you to really optimize the method and the discussion really happens right there on the protocol. And if there are a couple of things that you need to change on a protocol, you can um, create a new version of the protocol. So one thing that's really one of our core functionalities is our version control. So at any time you can create new versions of your protocols to just really capture all the details or all the changes that you've made to a protocol. So here, for example, you can see this in the back here is my version one and then I optimized it and I created version two of it. And if, for example, somebody in your team now has still the link to version one and they're about to like run that experiment and they click on it and they have the outdated link, they will get this notification that lets them know, hey, just wanted to let you know there's a newer version of this protocol available. And then if it's shared with them, they will be able to see that newer version. And then they, so that way really you make sure that everybody always knows what's the latest version and you know exactly which version to use so the versions don't really get lost and everybody um, knows which versions should be used. Um, and then just again for the running protocol, so if you are using our run functionality, this is what it looks like. And everything that you do here, so it's really just a checklist um, of all the individual steps and you can check off steps, you can skip steps, you can edit steps, and everything that you do here um, gets timestamped. You can add notes and images to individual steps if you'd like to. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the components makes the protocol scalable and you have these timers that start. Um, and uh, this running functionality can either be done from, uh, from the web or also from mobile devices. So we also have free Android and iOS apps that you could use to um, just run these protocols while you're in the lab conducting the experiment. And then once you're done, you get an experiment record and then you can share that with your um, team. And also if you make any changes here, we make it really easy for you to create what we call a fork. So a fork is not really a new version of a protocol, but it's rather like a, a modification. So you, you can create a different version that's not a new version but it's like a, a fork of a method so it's not a new version but it's still linked to it so everybody will be able to see where it came from but it's a new protocol um, and that works great if for example you're if you have like one protocol developed for one organism and now you want to translate it to another organism you can create a fork of that um, and as i mentioned before um, with the protocols that are your workspaces, you really can make sure that the protocols and data stay in the workspace, even if the group member leaves. The workspaces do come with enterprise level security in the cloud, um, and you do have group level permissions for members. So really there's granular permission levels that you really have full control over. And it's really easy to back up and export data at any time. If you want to export data, you can do that either from the file manager or from an individual protocol itself. Um, you can export it to your computer directly or you can sync it up with Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, or OneDrive. Um, and I want to just finish off by saying that there are a number of organizations encouraging the use of protocols.io right now. That includes journals and publishers, but also funders are requiring or recommending protocols.io their grant guidelines and also a lot of institutions um, are have campus-wide licenses for more reproducible research and publications and they just make sure they enable their researchers to um, have access to the protocol protocols.io 
platform. And with that, I'm at the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take any questions now. And if you have any questions later, please feel free to always reach out to me. I'm just at anita at protocols.io. So if you have any questions that come up later, if there's anything that I can help with, please feel free to shoot me an email. And if you do have questions, please feel free to put them into the Q&A window. And I can see already some questions are coming in. But on the bottom of your screen, you should see a little button that says Q&A. So if you click on that, you'll be able to send your message or send your question. And I can see the first question is already there. Um, can you keep a protocol always private? That's a good question. And yes, so every time you create a new protocol, it always starts out private. So it's it's always starts out private and then it's up to you who you want to share it with and when you want to share it. And you can keep protocols private forever. So you do not need to make protocols public. And if you want to have a protocol and you want to keep 10 versions private and maybe the 11th version you want to publish, you can do that. You can only publish version 11 and you can keep all the other versions private, but you can also keep everything private. So it's really up to you what you want to do, but you can definitely keep things private. And then I can see another question. Um, the question is, is this tool free for academics? That's a good question. And so protocols.io is free for everybody to publish protocols. So if you're making all your work public, even when you're developing protocols, um, that's free. And also one thing I didn't mention is if you're publishing protocols, um, we always ask you, what is the status of this protocol? So you can pick between, this is something that works great and you can add some notes and you can say, I've been doing this a thousand times and it always works. Or you can pick, um, we're still developing this. So you can say the protocol is in development to just let others know that you're still working on this and it's not optimized yet. So um, you can do that. Or the third option is even you can put other and you can say this is something we tried and it didn't work if you want to publish negative results. So um, so if you're using protocols that IO to publish protocols, it's always free. But if you're using it for private collaboration, it's a uh, subscription and a lot of institutions do have campus-wide licenses so that makes it free for everybody on campus and you can check all the institutions that do offer campus-wide licenses if you go to protocols.io slash organizations you'll be able to see all the organizations that do have campus-wide licenses and if you do think if your organization is not listed there and if you do think it would be beneficial for your institution feel free to Send us an email and we'll be happy, we would be happy to provide additional details on how to set that up for your organization. Okay, and I can see one more question in here. Um, can you add images to the protocols? That's a great question as well. And yes, we absolutely love images and you can add images to your protocols and you can even add videos to your protocols too. So if you have photos or videos that you want to add to individual steps to your, of your protocol, you can definitely add them. And I think images or like photos um, and videos are really great to just really let others know how to do things. And it's just really a very powerful addition to the text that is describing your method. Great, so these are all the questions. I so for now, again, if you have any questions later, feel free to always send me an email at anytimeprotocols.io. But thank you everybody for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.